Um, so today we will be having the next session now uh, on Python and Rust, a dynamic duo with Pyo3. And thank you all for joining here, ready to listen to our talk on uh, Pyo3. And, I, and as I saw, there are a few Rust developers. Okay, I'm really excited to spread the knowledge of Python and Rust together to you all. So without any further ado, let us move to the. Uh, let me introduce ourselves. Well, uh, he has introduced. Well, I'm just saying, uh, I'm Kesia. And I work as a product engineer in Strollby. And I'm uh, Roshan. I'm also a product engineer at Strollby. At Strollby, what we're doing is we are building a travel platform to revolutionize the commoner's travel experience. And uh, so let's move into the main topic. OK, so just a disclaimer. We are not experts in Rust. Well, and this talk is not to promote about Rust or to say that Python is not the best. It's not to talk about that. Well, it's more about to share the knowledge of Pyo3 and help you all be aware of the advantages of Pyo3 and know when to use Pyo3. Okay? So at the end of the session, I hope you all will get a gist about that. Great. Okay, so Python. Now, I believe to our most of the audience here, your favorite language would be Python. Uh, being a Python PyCon conference, I believe most would be Python developers, is my assumption here. OK, so Python is a high-level programming language and interpreter programming language. But what makes Python stand out? Now, Python's syntax, the, the way it's easy to read, easy to write, and making it a, um, the new people, new developers, to learn it easier. So I think for the past few years, Python had been one of the top one uh, it's one of the top five uh, best programming language or the top five most favorite programming languages, and it is gaining its popularity. But what makes Python stand out is because of the rich ecosystem. We have a large and extensive, comprehensive uh, set of libraries that are being used widely. So whichever library you want, you can find it in our Python package, or it is being uh, easily to develop. So that makes Python very popular, and again, as I said, of the readability. Uh, okay, so uh, to all the Pythonists out there, uh, we often come across solu pre uh, we often come across places where uh, Python becomes a bottleneck for when it comes for performance-intensive tasks. So uh, sometimes it would be easier for us to like. Uh, a way to make ma Python magically appear, uh, magically faster, or something like that. So that is where Pyo3 comes in. So uh, let's take a small example. Uh, this is a. Uh, I need the sum of squares from the numbers from one to ten million. Uh, this is a simple and a naive use of use case, and it, say it shows that the time taken is five seconds. Now uh, imagine this: you are running a web web production service, and it takes every five seconds to do this. It, it is lagging, right? So what do we do? We could we could use NumPy actually, but uh, we come across later ab about that. Uh, but to solve this, we could use Pyo3. So what Pyo3 does is that you could use a memory safe and performant language like Rust and create packages out of it, and then you could call those uh, you could call those performance in, in performance performant code via Python. So you get the simplicity of Python, but also the speed of Rust. Uh, so the same thing in uh, while using Pyo3, uh, in Python we took five seconds. Using NumPy we got 0 0.3 seconds, and using Pyo3 it's like instantaneous. It's like 0 0.00019 seconds. In this chart you could see that uh, Pyo3 actually the chart I put Pyo3 as uh, five because it, I cannot see anything, uh, so uh, it's that fast. Okay and. Yeah. So what is what is actually Pyo3? So Pyo3 enables us to write and export native Python modules, uh, nat native Rust code as Python modules, and you could uh, you could so en essentially enables you to call Python from Rust, and it is very seamless. And uh, moreover, it is actively it is an actively maintained project. Okay. Uh, so coming about uh, Rust, uh, how many of you heard use Rust like uh, familiar with Rust? So yeah. Okay. So uh, to uh, okay, so I'm actually a beginner in Rust. Uh, so 
what i learn about is it's a low level programming language it's a syst it's a systems made systems programming language actually developed by mozilla for their browser i think and it's a compiled language and uh, one of the great things about rust is its memory safety memory safety so you, it has uh, advanced features like uh, the borrow checker which enables you to like uh, have memory safe code memory safe code and it's reliable and it's high performant so uh, yeah so you could see that rust and python have complementary strengths and weakness one is a very fast language to write and one is a, one is a very fast language to execute right so if you could just combine these two it would be great so that is where pyo3 comes in okay now gluing those features uh, okay uh, now one uh, one one problem would be there like python is a platform independent sol solution right and then uh, but the rust is compiled and is shared as a library so uh, the rust uh, the rust binary is different for the arm 64 or uh, x84 x86 everything so how do you actually package this right uh, packaging is one of the hardest problem it comes when uh, doing this doing this so thankfully we got maturing so more more to maturing about case here well yes okay so packaging was an issue here and there's a tool for that and that is maturin now maturin is for building and publishing rust based python uh, packages now with very minimal configuration so you have when you initialize maturin you get a set of code bases ready to make your uh, programming in python very easy now uh, maturin is not just for uh, python but it supports different bindings also now installing maturin it's very simple just using pip we could install maturin and uh, the main thing is maturin supports pep standard the uh, pep standard 621 which is storing the project metadata in pyproject.toml so storing all the configurations in a well organized manner uh, and that uh, follows the python enhancement proposal okay so what is maturin now um, in the case of Ru uh, rust we have crates now crates are something the rust modules that are used for publishing uh, and for making your work easier so using maturin you uh, help it helps in building this rust modules and it exports it in uh, the python runtime and also uh, as i said it can help in creating a code base and uh, through that since we have a proper pyproject.toml file and a proper configuration setup it's easy to manage and uh, and uh, would build and uh, build and export them now moving into it okay so this is the first step so first step is we will be initializing the maturin so maturin.init when you give they will be asking which binding you would be uh, preferring so there is a list of bindings uh, that they would be suggesting so one of them is pyo3 so there are a lot more of bindings available which is like rust python bindings there are a lot more of uh, bindings okay so the first one is pyo3 now let us look into the other other bindings which are available and what makes pyo3 stand out so the first one that we can look at uh, is cffi okay so uh, what here is it is just compatible uh, it is compatible with all python versions so there are certain bindings that are just supported only for python 2 and has not been updated to python 3 so different bindings so in this it is actually actively updated but uh, as per my research or as per the documents that i read through it says that certain uses find it complex to use and uh, it's not that well user friendly or that's what i understood by it well uh more into bin bin is not used uh that much or not that greatly used now bin is something that helps in supporting and distributing binary applications and next comes rust c python so we discussed some of the binding uh, bindings or some of the python rust bindings now other one is rust uh, c python uh, c python now what is rust c python now uh telling us a story you can see like pyo3 started with rusty python so it was initially forked from rusty python so it had that as a code base that was their initial code base and then it started developing from that but now if you look pyo3 is completely different from the actual rusty python so pyo3 now stands out completely uh, but what happened is so luckily as pyo3 came up rusty python got almost extinct or it got it's not updated now is not actively maintained so that's what we understood by rusty python's uh, github repo and its documentation so well okay 
Now, if you look in the code, so we have Rusty Python and Pyo3 here. Now, uh, the main uh, thing which Pyo3 says is, is that, so in, Py, uh, in Rusty Python, it, uh, it owns every Python objects. But in Pyo3, you can see the Ambrosian before the, 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 even, uh, the result or the objects. So it says that it only references the Python object. So it just, uh, all the references have a gil lifetime. So I have, uh, if you know about gil lifetime, it is like the global interpreter lock. And it is a duration in which they, uh, they exit from the thread. So, so the, they all, all, the, all the references have that uh, lifetime that is provided in Pyo3. OK, so another example here is uh, about Rusty Python. Now it uses uh, macro-based DSL, that is domain-specific language. And uh, what happens in this is it is not easier to extend. It uses certain macros, but uh, like using uh, extending with await or synchronous, it is not that easy in Rusty Python. But uh, in Pyo3, we use proc uh, or procedural macros. Now, procedure macros is something like, uh, it's one of the core or the meta programming of Rust. Now, uh, you can see here hash pi class or hash pi methods. So, there are certain uh, macros available. And these macros make it easier to write Rust and convert it to Python functions. So, they have its usage here. And uh, so, Pyo3 stands out here. And uh, it's almost similar to our normal Rust functions. So we make it easier to write and export. Okay, now another difference what I found it uh, was, so in looking to the error side, in the error side, it is not, uh, it doesn't automatically report the errors. So in Rusty Python, uh, the question mark, the question mark in Rust is something like the try, where it's able to automatically detect the errors and uh, expose it along with the result. So that is not, actually present in Rusty Python. It's not that possible to use, but here in Pyo3, uh, it doesn't require, uh, it doesn't require Python for, like, uh, we, don't, we do not uh, require to specify the Python keyword, but uh, it supposes the, the question mark, uh, question mark, which is something that is present, which is followed by the from keyword. So this is something which is automatically available in uh, Pyo3. So some of the Pyo3 features are that, as I said, it has automatic bindings, and it increases the performance. So we went through different bindings. We saw uh, CFI5, we saw bin, we saw Rusty Python, and there are a lot more of other bindings available. But Pyo3 actually stands out. It is actually well maintained and has a lot of use cases, which you will be discovering in the coming slides. So uh, now, as I said, of the documentation, community support, it has got a great number of applications. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how we actually use maturing. So first of all, you have to, uh, let's uh, create a package called python underscore pyo3. So that's the name of the package we're going to build. Let's make a directory cd into it, and then maturing in it. It would ask which binding you have to use, and then select on pyo3. And then the resulting folders actually would be this. You would get a cargo.toml, pyproject.toml, and then uh, the source folder, which were all the your Rust, Rust code would be. The cargo.toml is kind of li like the pyproject.toml, it's the, where the uh, configuration for the Rust project actually lives in. So uh, coming to the first example that I show you, the sum of the squares thing, right? Uh, so one of the best things about Rust is that it's zero cost abstractions. Like it has abstractions, but the thing is that uh, it, when it comes to compiling, the abstractions do not have any cost. Like uh, for, uh, the iterators, uh, in other languages, like you could use a simple for loop, the the, 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 the the there would be a difference where like while making a simple for loop and uh, using a map operator like but uh, map is an ab abstraction over a s simple for loop you could say like that but in uh, rust the these these abstractions are zero cost like they d they do not give us any performance hit and actually it it is like uh, faster so uh, the resulting resulting code would be very simple uh, like a high level like a high level language it's like uh, i create an iterator from 1 to n map over it, and then uh, then take the sum of it. This would give you the sum of squares. So in this, you could see this, uh, like she said, the mac macro, the macros. So there's a pi module named Python pi 3 And this would be the actual mo name of the module. And this module, I'm going to add this function called sum of squares. 
the sum of squares is just a, a simple rust 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 function that i'm using okay uh, yes and then uh, you you could run mature and develop into the develop and then uh, just by opening a terminal uh, and uh, writing on python you can see that uh, you could import the actual uh, function from the module like from python pyo3 import sum of squares and then and just uh, call the function sum of squares of 100 and it would give the actual result so in uh, what actually happens is that uh, after co while calling the sum of squares the execution is passed to this rust code the rust uh, like generated code and that is what is that what is being executed so imagine if a performance intensive task you could uh, offload this work to this rust code which is faster okay uh, and one more thing i need to note is maturing develop it's not actually uh, it's a debug developing uh, you have to you do put the release flag like mature and develop hyphen hyphen release for getting the optimized and production version ready for our binary okay now over to kesia for parallelism pyo3 so uh, one of the main highlight of pyo3 uh, is i suppose parallelism well parallelism is something that is the ability of program to use multiple processing units to perform the task simultaneously now uh, if i talk in python uh, one of the way of implementing parallelism is through the multiprocessing uh, processing module, and uh, it creates takes multiple processes at a time. But uh, what what I've heard is that C Python, as we all know about the global interpreter lock, it prevents <coughs> certain uh, certain uh, functions to not execute in parallel. Now, suppose if you take uh, for multi-threading, mostly I/O based. Uh, IO bound tasks are mostly uh, prone for multi threading. Now, for getting CPU, uh, CPU bound tasks, multi threading is not used, and it becomes used because of the usage of global interpreter lock, uh, it, co uh, it causes an overhead. And uh, to solve this issue or to make it much more effective, PyO3 has this parallelism, which uh, can be achieved in Rustily code. Now, you look into the example. Now, in, uh, in PyO3, or in the Rust, we have a library called Rayon. Now, Rayon is a data parallelism library, which is extremely lightweight and very fast. So that makes Rayon very easy. Now, uh, what is the highlight of Rayon is that it's easy to convert a sequential iterator into a parallel one. Now, if you look into this example, we have, we have power underscore uh, lines. So that is something aligned to make it a parallel execution or the multiple uh, of the entire function. Now, this code is basically to find the occurrence, uh, to count the occurrences of a particular word in a line. So uh, we have the search function, which indirectly calls the count line, and that execution happens in a parallel way. So if you see parallel underscore line, takes every or uh, calls a function parallelly, uh, calls the function count underscore line parallelly. Now, uh, next we have allow, under, allow underscore threads. Now, what is PyO3's uh, allow threads? Now, uh, allow threads is not something that they would say is really, really a better option to be relied on. But uh, you should use allow threads in a sensible manner. Know when to use py, uh, allow threads, because otherwise it can cause uh, issues along the way. So, but w the, main, uh, the main advantage of using allow threads is that it controls the what the usage of or the it controls the the temporary release of guilt. So it's much more effective and it enhances the performance. So that is something the pyo 3s function is allow threads that is being used. So it's not saying that um, the guild will be, the, the entire guild will be vanished, but it controls the execution of that. So it's much more effective, but we should really know when to use it. Otherwise, it can cause issues like data race, depending on the functions. So mainly, we see allow threads is something used if we have a lot of a big Rust function or a big Rust code, and maybe your particular function uh, needs not like need to be executed in parallel with other threads. So we need to allow other threads to be executed. So in such scenarios, we can use allow threads. OK. Okay, some let's see some of the real world uh, examples of packages which are actually using PyO3 under the hood. Under the hood, so uh, the first one is Pydantic. So Pydantic, uh, with their version two, has completely rewritten their uh, core logic 
into so a package called Pydantic Core, which is fully implemented in Rust. All their parsing and packaging is everything is in Rust. And then on top of it, they are creating this wrapper, uh, wrapper, and this and the model Py Pydantic. Uh, and as a result, Pydantic is among the fastest data validation libraries for Python. In their documentations, they are saying uh, a three to three point five percentage increase. Uh, 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 times increase, 3 to 3.5 times increase uh, when compared to normal Python only code for a simple validation. Re validation. Okay. Now, uh, uh, some th some sometimes you you have like you are a Rust, Rust, Rust programmer and you need to like uh, you like a really good package, like a really good great in Rust, and you need you need that in Python. So for that you can you can use PyO3 as a, just a simple wrapper over your Python or your Rust code. So in this case, this, there's this package called DT parse, and this is the source code of this DT parse. It, it's just this one line, one one file. So what it does is just it, it it's just yeah, what it does is it's a daytime compatible timestamp parser for Rust. So there's this a really good package called Chrono, and Chrono is a Rust package. So what a DT parse is does that it takes Chrono and uses this daytime dot from store, and then you uh, uses that to uh, parse the data. So it's a simple wrapper over a already existing good Rust uh, crate. Uh, okay, and in the documentation they're saying it's like 10 to 15 times faster than uh, daytime. And when coming to daytime, uh, the next one is Pentulum. Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard about Pentulum. Pentulum is a uh, it's a daytime daytime library uh, which makes it super easy to work with daytimes, passing and everything. So Pentulum, this is one of the uh, utils I found in the Rust, uh, Rust code, uh, is sleep, is long year, like that. Okay. And uh, right now, Pendulum version 2 is running on uh, C extensions, but Pendulum, Pendulum version 3, which is currently in beta stage, they are using PyO3, uh, uh, completely rewriting it, using PyO3. Okay. So, uh, so for concluding, I hope you all got an idea. So there's a wide range of applications that are coming up that has been shifted to uh, the use of PyO3. Now, uh, so PyO3 is actually powerful and can make your code faster, but make sure that you know when to use it. And at the end, it's not going to replace Python, but help in enhancing your Python libraries in a very simple and efficient manner. So thank you all for listening, and I hope you all got an idea. Thank you so much. <laughs>